So I ended up sleeping on this design. And what I decided was rather than use sheet metal to tie everything together, I'm just going to extrude the portal hub backing plate out with a big billet flange and get it as close as possible to that four link mount and bolt everything through there because it's a lot easier to make billet than it is to do a bunch of complicated sheet metal fabrication. And then I can add these little heat treated inserts in embedded in the aluminum to tie everything together. So first I need to reduce that bolt size on the trailing arm mount. It's about an inch too long. So I'm going to swap that out from McMaster using a shorter bolt so that I have more clearance. So I'm going to start with an offset plane to get it as close as possible to the four link mount. Then I'm going to make a base flange, which is that circle that you're seeing. And this is going to be the main mounting interface that I will embed those heat treated inserts in, and then I can add the bolts in. And then I can tie this flange to the main backing plate for the portal and arrange it in a way where there's lots of clearance for assembly. And so there's two main advantages to this design. You still retain your rotational strength, but your vertical load is now captured by that billet boss that we're looking at that big long cylindrical tube which ended up being nine inches long so the chromoly tube on the solid axle will insert into that cylinder and will be the main load bearing vertically and then all i have to do is constrain it rotationally and it's way stronger than the previous design and this part is totally machinable with those pocket cutouts. But the next thing I need to do is add some pinholes. So one important thing for assembly design, when you're bolting two parts together, the bolts are only strong along their axis. So like along the length of the bolt is the strength. Whenever you put a shear load on a bolt, it's not as strong. So whenever you have a rotational force between two parts, the way to constrain that rotationally and retain, retain shear strength is to use pins because pins shear strength is way stronger than bolts shear strength. And so that's just sort of a best practice in mechanical engineering, not only to register the parts together so that they're really precise, but to constrain any rotational movement that will induce a shear load on the bolt. So now those bolts only job is to tie everything together face to face. And then the pins take care of the rotational strength because they have way more shear force that can be imparted on them before they break.